All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today, we're going to be following up on the previous segments that we've been looking at, uh, the Dofer A170 uh, slew limiter. In some of the previous examples, we have seen oscilloscope views of how a slew limiter uh, functions on an incoming signal. In the last one, we were looking at more specific examples regarding portamento, uh, or slew as it's also known. Uh, but for this one, I thought we would look at an example that's found in the A170 manual um, out there, uh, and that's called the Glissando AM example. Um, it's going to take a few minutes to uh, patch it, so I'm going to explain what we're doing as we're going through there. So the majority of this segment is going to be that example. Uh, in the next example that we're going to be doing in the next video, uh, we're going to be looking at the A170 as an attack release type envelope. Uh, so that's a little preview of what's coming up. So without further ado, it's going to take us a bit of time to get the patch going. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Um, there are a couple things that I'm going to have to set up, and I'm going to actually explain some of this, because if you look around, you can see we got the Dofer A155 kind of over here on the left. And then in the center over here, we have a couple of oscillators right here. And then we also have a VCA our slew limiter here, uh, who is the feature of the show. And then we have another VCA over here off on the right. And that's just going to uh, serve the purpose of being an output to our mixer. Um, so in this patch, what we're going to be doing is uh, taking a CV from our sequencer. So if you look at our sequencer over here uh, from post out, that's where our pitch is going to be coming out. And it's going down into the lower section of this dual voltage controlled switch. And then the output is going actually to this multiple right here. And then if you can see, uh, there's actually two cables, one going up to the first A110, uh, which I'm gonna be calling uh, VCO1 for this example. And then the second CV pitch is going up here to our slew limiter. And we're going to be using that here uh, in a bit. So basically what's happening is the same pitch from our sequencer is going to be going to two places, two VCOs. Um, it's going to be going to this one right here, and then it's also going to be going to this one ultimately in a little bit. Um, so let's get that half of the patch going, and then we'll go from there. Uh, so I am going to need to take my VCO1, which I'm just going to take a pulse wave out of here. And then I'm going to go into my first VCA right here. And so what's happening now is audio is going from here right into my VCA. Now my second VCO, I had to do a little prep work before this. So it's actually tuned at a third above. This one's tuned at a C. Uh, that's the bass pitch. And then this one's tuned at a major third above it, so at an E. Um, that's just for the example. Um, if you need further explanation as to why we're doing that, uh, what I can tell you briefly is that it's going to enable the pitch to kind of make this uh, sort of moving timbre type effect, which we'll hear a little bit later. Uh, and the way it's going to do that is by the second CV signal that's going up to the slew limiter. That's where it's going to start, but then it's going to come out of that slew limiter and it's going to go straight into our second VCO. So I'm going to pipe it into CV1 here of what I'm going to call VCO number two. Let me make sure my cable's all the way in. So there we go. And then from there, I'm going to take an output from that. And in kind of a weird way, Normally we mix VCOs, but in this example, we're actually going to do something called AM. So we're actually going to take the audio from here, and we're going to use it to modulate the amplitude of this VCO. So I'm going to patch it right into CV number one right here. There we go. And so as that fires, that's going to be modulating the amplitude of the first VCO, which is right here. Okay. Now, let's go a little bit further. We have actually a gate signal uh, coming from our sequencer in the form of this orange cable. And that's going to be going over all the way on the right-hand side to 
the gate input of our envelope. I'm going to just move this down just a little bit. Actually, let me do this so it's out of the way. Just rearrange my cables. There we go. All right, so it's feeding gates over into the envelope, which you can see is being activated at the same rate if we look back at our sequencer at the clock rate. You can see the clock rate right here, this LED blinking. And then if you look over at the gate on the envelope generator, you can see that it's kind of flashing at the same interval. Uh, if you can't see it at the same time, then you're just going to have to take my word for it. They are kind of in sync uh, right there. So what we're going to do with the output of this is we're going to actually take it from our envelope generator and go into our second VCA right there. Okay. So basically, this is going to be shaping the ultimate sound that's going to be coming out to our mixer. Now I'm going to take the output of our VCA over here. So essentially, in essence, this is just the pulse wave going into here, but then it's going to be modulated by this VCO. So I'm going to take the output from here, go over into our second VCA, all the way over here, and we should, yeah, we should automatically hear sound. Uh, it's not going to be exactly what we want yet because I haven't activated the slew limiter, but here we go at any rate. So there's our sound so far. Okay. And it's a little bit low, uh, so I kind of actually want to go up one octave. So I'm just going to go up one octave on both. I'm just going to shift up one, and then shift up one on the other one. And that's just to get kind of in a more comfortable octave. Hopefully it didn't throw too much off. Okay, so now we have the two kind of feeding each other. Uh, VCO2 going up here, and then VCO1 going into the input right there. Now, let's get the slew limiter going, and just bring that up a little bit. And right there we should hear our little timbre shift. Now right there it might actually be a little bit too heavy on the slew limiter. Because for my ears it needs to be a little bit subtle, so let me just kind of adjust it a little bit. Now if I want to I can shape my sound a little bit and bring the sustain up a little bit. play with my decay a little, just my release time. Tweak that a little more. Let me actually bring it down to the low range. Bring the gain all the way. There we go. It's a little more controlled. Okay, so let's hear it without the timbre shift. So I'm just going to unpatch VCO2. And that's just our straight VCO at a pitch that I designated as the bass or the tonic. Okay, now let's hear it again with our VCO2. Pretty interesting sound. And let's actually just vary it just a little bit and see what kind of results we get by bringing this down. So there we have our little timbre shift, or the Sondo AM patch from the Dofer manual. Now, at this point, there's a few different places you can tweak the patch. You know, 
as we were doing a moment ago, you can go in and adjust the envelope generator a little bit to kind of um, shape your sound a little bit. Uh, you can adjust the slew amount. You can go up a little bit for a more pronounced effect. Where this VCO is then taking a little bit longer to get up to that same pitch that it's receiving from our sequencer over here. Or you can, of course, bring the slew time down if you wanted to bring it down just a little bit. Um, for additional variety, you could even also use the lower section of the slew limiter. Although, keep in mind, if you do, um, it might not be quite as accurate because, remember, the, um, the circuits inside of here are a little bit more precise when it comes to pitch in the top section up here. So, there you have it. That is the patch from the... Uh, a170 manual, the Glissando AM. Um, at any rate, that's going to actually wrap up this section of the A170 videos. Um, I do want to thank some people out there um, on the Muffigler forum. I did have someone that helped me out with this patch because I was looking through the manual and I didn't quite figure it out the way I really intended to and I couldn't get it up and running really quickly. Um, so at any rate, thank you out there for helping me with this patch and of course a few of the other people that gave me a few suggestions for getting the tuning happening the way I wanted it to. Um, so please stay tuned for the next section of this where we're going to be looking at the A170 as an attack release envelope. I hope that you found this useful. Uh, please keep on patching out there and see you next time.